I'm from Switzerland. I, I grew up in a town named St. Gallen in the Eastern German-speaking part. And uh, I studied in Zurich European art history and um, East Asian art history, which was its own subfield, and um, Chinese studies. And uh, I did an MA in, in uh, French 18th century painting. And uh, after, after graduating, I uh, immediately got a job offer to work in the Asian Art Museum. And so I switched. Uh, I worked on a collection uh, cataloging project, an exhibition of a private collection of gold and silver, Chinese gold and silver. And that also ended up morphing into my uh, doctoral research. Um, we had some problems in assessing a number of objects in that uh, collection and it was a, a really interesting, completely uncharted field. So I figured, oh, right, well, you know, there is a, uh, an untreated area and uh, it uh, made a good, a good topic for uh, dissertation. So at the same time, I worked at the university as a lecturer. I worked at the Rietberg Museum, which was just the uh, local museum for non-Western art, uh, the only one of its kind in Switzerland. And um, I worked there as a research assistant for this exhibition and afterwards as a, a, some form of uh, assistant curator. Yeah, so that's basically my life in, in, uh, in Switzerland. And uh, as soon as I had my dissertation, I went on a job market and then B BGC was my first job uh, after I graduated. And uh, here I am still working on Chinese gold and silver and many other things. Gold and silver was, uh, I guess, sort of my, my initial area of expertise. Within that field, there is a, a sort of an emphasis on medieval artifacts. That's the time when uh, the tradition of goldsmithing really started to blossom in China in, in the Tang period, um, in the 7th, 8th centuries AD. So I, I kind of gravitated into that field. My dissertation really looks only at uh, the history of goldsmithing and uh, the history of the development of the goldsmithing profession in China up to the late Song period, so into the 13th century. I'm not looking at uh, later periods. So that really kind of formed my, my time period of interest. And uh, after dissertation research, I kind of stuck with that, that era. Uh, I'm quite interested now in interactions between scholarly image production uh, charts and sort of the, the Confucian scholarly way of thinking about imagery and uh, design and how this interacts with the production of actual artifacts that are, you know, used within uh, the Chinese elite uh, society. So that's, uh, I guess, my main area of interest uh, in terms of period. Uh, also, in a way, inspired by this gold and silver research, I uh, became rather interested in northern China. Um, the, the research itself is heavily based on archaeological finds, and uh, one area that I realized was very under-researched and quite fascinating was lots of new discoveries, especially since the 1980s, was the Liao Dynasty and, and its uh, tombs and pagoda finds that were uh, made. So there's a lot of gold and silver in those tombs. So uh, I'm now working on a book that surveys this kind of history of archaeological finds and also looks at biographies of the uh, Liao elite and um, how one can sort of weave these two histories together, a history of material culture and archaeological finds and um, the, the history of this Liao dynasty. The Liao dynasty was uh, made up largely of non-Chinese people. They were called Kitans. They had their own language and uh, their own cultural uh, lifestyle that's quite different from the Chinese, but it sort of morphed 
yeah, together in the 11th century. So my uh, master's research was on park paintings uh, by, by Fragonard, uh, 18th century park landscapes. Uh, so I've, I've always been quite fascinated by, by landscape painting and uh, when I was sort of wondering what am I going to do in life, one idea was to work for the park service and a garden service in Zurich. The Bart Graduate Center for a while had a, a, a program for garden history studies and garden design. Uh, so I was, I was happy to offer a class on Chinese and Japanese gardens and that, even though that program uh, was eventually, you know, closed here, I still continue off and on teaching that class in sort of various forms, sometimes with an emphasis on China, sometimes uh, looking more broadly at comparisons between China and Japan. Well, one great thing is that um, the administration really doesn't dictate what uh, we're supposed to teach. And uh, I'm perfectly free to teach a topic that pertains to my uh, personal research interests uh, or just personal interests. And um, so I, I, I appreciate that, I try out some new things uh, in class first and, and then develop them into uh, articles or so on. So that, that's uh, quite great and I like uh, a lot of the students' input uh, in class as well. Uh, there's a, a very diverse student body and many students have a, a, you know, unexpected or excellent expertise in, in certain fields and garden studies in particular uh, was one of these areas. Uh, I taught that garden course and there were horticulturists and uh, garden landscape designers in the class that had like the most interesting observations that you know, somebody who doesn't know everything about plants is, and, I guess has a much more academic approach to things. It was just very gratifying to have a student in class who could identify pretty much every plant in every painting uh, that we've looked at. And the same is true for uh, having potters, for instance, in a class on ceramics. Um, this is, uh, is wonderful and um, enriching for the entire class, not just for myself, to have uh, this kind of expertise in students in class. So yes, uh, I have to say we have a, a very nice uh, mix of students that are really fun to have in class.